Shall we start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just write down in chat box. Yes, sir. Yes. So, are you comfortable in English, Hindi, or mix up of two languages? Sir, mix up of two languages. Mix up of two languages, na? No, so anyone sir, is from South India or East India? English? Yes, sir. English, sir, please. English. Lakshita, Shasha, and all, huh? Why not an issue? So, let's start. Do maintain a register for noting. Name of paper. Tax laws. MCQ based. Hundred marks. One marks into hundred question. There is a negative marking. Negative marking also. Which one is point two five or one by four. So tax law is the name of paper, hundred mark, completely MCQ based. Hundred question will be there, one marks each. For positive, one marks. For negative, there would be point two five. So first, I am taking the major amendments from Finance Act 2020. As far as your attempt is concerned, your attempt is in June. 21 as far as june 21 is concerned finance act twenty is applicable previous year twenty twenty one assessment year 21-22. So as far as June attempt is concerned, Finance Act 2020 is applicable. Previous year 2021, assessment year 21-22. I hope you are getting the issue, now. You know the previous year, you know the assessment year? You know the previous yes, year and assessment year? Yes, sir. Yeah. So finally, I am starting with uh, one more thing. 100 marks. Bifurcation direct tax. Indirect tax. Direct tax weight is 70 marks. Indirect tax weight is 30 marks. But as per latest trend, <laughs> MCQ based direct tax, you have to read income tax. And indirect tax, you have to read GST and custom. Fine, first I am taking up this. Excuse me, uh, sir. Please. Uh, sir, in our book, it is written 50 marks direct tax. Oh, you are in executive, na? Sorry, sorry. Extremely sorry. This is for final. Extremely sorry. Actually, last class, my final ke thi bata. 50 marks. Yes. And 50 marks, I did take. So, first, I am taking direct tax only. Yeah? So, major amendments in direct tax. Major amendment in direct tax. Number one. Residential status.
एज वी नो बेटा इंडिविजुअल है हवन स्टेटस थ्री यस सर रेजिडेंट एंड ऑर्डिनरली रेजिडेंट रेजिडेंट एंड नॉट ऑर्डिनरली रेजिडेंट एंड नंबर थ्री नॉन रेजिडेंट वेन एन इंडिविजुअल बिकम रेजिडेंट एंड ऑर्डिनरली रेजिडेंट anyone when individual become resident and ordinarily resident anyone when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and both of additional condition an individual is said to be resident and ordinarily resident when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and both of the additional condition an individual shall be treated as resident and ordinarily resident when an individual is treated as resident and not ordinarily r and n o r agree this or not when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and satisfies one or none of the additional condition when individual treated as resident and not ordinarily resident when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and satisfies one or none of the additional condition number 3 when an individual treated as non resident when he does not satisfies when he does not satisfies any of the basic condition so please make it fast individual r and o r individual r and o r when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and both of the additional condition individual r and n o r when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and one or none dono mein se koi ek ya koi bhi nahi of the additional condition and he does not satisfies any one of the basic condition then individual shall be treated as non resident individual shall be treated as non resident what are the basic condition basic condition number 1 he should be in india for 182 days or more during relevant previous year basic condition 2 he should be in india for 60 days or more in past year and in immediate preceding four year 365 days or more i am again repeating first basic condition 182 days or more in current financial year second basic condition 60 days or more in current financial year and 365 days or more in immediate post past for financial year these two are the basic condition and we have two additional condition also number one he must be resident in india in at least two year out of 10 year and number two he must be res he must be residing in india for 730 days or more in 7 year in immediate past 7 year have you read all these conditions or not say yes or no say yes or no or write down in chat box should i write down all the conditions or shall i move further
he should be in india for 182 days or more in financial year 2021 second condition in financial year 2021 he should be in india for 60 days 60 days or more and and in immediate past 4 year he should be in india for 365 days or more am i clear additional yes, condition additional condition कोई भी क्वेरी हो बेटा माइक ऑन करके यू मे आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन जस्ट ओपन द माइक एंड आस्क द क्वेश्चन एडिशनल कंडीशन नंबर वन ही मस्ट बी रेजिडेंट फॉर एटलीस्ट टू ईयर आउट ऑफ टेन ईयर सेकेंड he should be in india for 730 days or more in past 7 years so whosoever satisfied any of the basic condition and both of the additional condition then status would be resident and ordinarily resident and resident and not ordinarily resident satisfied any one of the basic condition and additional any one or none and non resident when he does not satisfies any one of the basic condition when he does not satisfied any one of the basic condition now what is the major amendment major amendment by finance act 2020 a new section has been inserted section 61a deemed resident highly expected for exam deemed resident indian citizen who lives abroad indian citizen who lives abroad in a country in a tax haven country what do you mean by tax haven country a country where any type of income tax shall not apply a country where any type of income tax shall not apply tax haven country means tax free country for example mauritius cyprus dubai cayman island ye examples hain beta mauritius dubai etc indian citizen who lives abroad in a tax haven country having total income other than foreign income can i say that indian income can i say that indian income an indian citizen who lives abroad in tax haven country having total income other than foreign income exceeds rupee 15 lakh exceeds rupee 15 lakh then he shall deem to be resident 
and not ordinarily resident then he shall deem to be resident and not ordinarily resident number of days in india shall have no relevance number of days in india shall have no relevance even if he is not in india even for a single day still he shall be treated as resident and not ordinarily resident but for this he has to satisfy all the condition number 1 he must be an indian citizen number 2 who lives abroad number 3 in tax haven country number 4 having total income exceeds 15 lakh if all points are satisfied then he shall be treated as he shall be treated as resident and not ordinarily resident number of days in india important note number of days in india shall have so sir only this this condition matter this is sorry only these conditions matter okay exactly an individual shall deem to be resident and not ordinarily resident only when all these conditions are simultaneously satisfied all conditions condition number 1 repeat again he must be an indian citizen condition number 2 living abroad condition number 3 in tax having country condition number 4 total income other than foreign income exceeds 15 lakh then by default answer shall be and by default answer shall be resident and not ordinarily resident number of days shall have no relevance so this is very much unique situation where a person shall be treated as resident even if he is not residing in india at all even if he is not residing in india at all but for this all these condition must be satisfied indian citizen who lives abroad in tax haven country having total income up to 15 lakh then he shall be treated as resident and not ordinarily resident any query any ifs and buts sir he is r n o d to be resident he is r n uh, your voice is breaking beta sir he is deemed or r n o r yes he shall be deemed as r n o r oh, okay sir if all conditions of section 61 a is satisfied then he shall be deemed as r n o r and no r number of days in india shall have no relevance no need to check 182 days no need to check 60 or 365 days no need to check additional condition directly answer would be resident and not ordinarily resident subject to subject to all condition of 61 a are satisfied i hope you are getting the issue Shall I move on? Sir, R N O R definition. Can you just uh, revise, please, once again? Basic principle of law is that a person shall be treated as R and O R only when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and satisfied one or none of the additional condition. A person. shall be treated as r and o r when he satisfies any one of the basic condition and satisfies one or none of the additional condition only then he shall be treated as r and n o r but from finance act 2020 one more type of person shall be treated as r and o r and n o r if he is an indian citizen who lives abroad in tax haven country having total income exceeds 15 lakh then irrespective of number of days he shall be treated as resident and not ordinarily resident got it okay yeah thank you any other 
Shall I move on? Yes, sir. Next. Second major amendment in residential status. Second major amendment. In residential status. Earlier there was a law. An Indian citizen. An Indian citizen or person of Indian origin who comes to India for visit purpose who comes to India for visit purpose and stay in India up to and stay in India up to 181 days He shall be treated as non-resident. Prior to Finance Act 2020, Section 6, Subsection 6 says an individual, Indian citizen or person of Indian origin who comes to India for visit purpose and stay in India up to 181 days then he shall be treated as a non-resident in widely if he period of stay in India is 182 days or more then he shall be treated as resident otherwise if period of stay is 181 days or less he shall be treated as non-resident any ifs and buts in this point an Indian citizen or person of Indian origin who resides abroad and comes to India for visit purpose, then stay in India up to 181 days, he shall be treated as non-resident. If stay 182 days or more, he shall be treated as a resident. Any ifs and buts? No, Any ifs and buts in this point? How it is examined that I person? How? Sir, sir that the person is from Indian origin. It is altogether a separate when issue. If he himself, his parents or grandparents were born in undivided India, then person shall be treated as person of Indian origin. Sir, who, Leave who it. investigates that? Sorry? Sir, who investigates that? This is not our area, my dear. We are here to discuss <laughs> taxation. Uh, Sir, uh, what to do for the NRI trans uh, transactions? NRI transaction regarding what? Sir, uh, regarding sir non finance and transaction means uh, I want to say that if a person stays means uh, work for India from abroad. If a person he resides is... abroad. Yeah, sir. His person okay. resides abroad and working for India and generating okay. the Indian in in income for him. Generating foreign income outside India? Sir, gener generating Indian income residing in foreign countries. Mr. X, an Indian citizen, resides in US. Fine? Yes, sir. Now, next. Next what? Next what? Uh, sir, next sir, uh, if uh, he generate income for India, means uh, res uh, generate income in USA? Yes, sir. In USA, he is working for India and Indian gov gov uh, government pays him. Indian government, it means he is working in embassy? Sure, sure, sir, like that. He is working in embassies? 
then such income shall be taxable in india okay sir okay now mind it one sir, thing here only. mind it one thing only hmm. when i am talking about residential status focus on residential status only don't move here and there otherwise discussion would be useless na we have only five classes where i have to complete entire taxation please focus on residential status only in last 15 to 20 minute of class we will discuss each and every query separately so okay, it's, humble, okay. it's my humble request to you focus on amendments only otherwise okay, to hey, ho jayega kuch pata hi nahi chalega theek hai na in <laughs> last 15 to 20 minutes we will definitely discuss all the issues okay. shall i move on shall i move yes, on yes, yes you should move on so fine now what is the major amendment in 66 what is the major amendment in 66 just write it down an indian citizen oblique person of indian origin who resides abroad having total income other than foreign income exceeds 15 lakh an indian citizen or person of indian origin who resides abroad having total income other than foreign income exceeds 15 lakh comes to india for visit purpose comes to india for visit purpose i am again repeating number 1 indian citizen or person of indian origin who comes to who resides abroad having total income other than foreign income exceeds 15 lakh comes to india for visit purpose then period of stay in india less than 120 days he shall be treated as any idea non resident non resident earlier earlier days was 182 now 120 this is a major amendment brought by finance act 2020 earlier 182 days shall be taken into consider now 120 days less than 120 days he shall be treated as non resident period of stay in india 120 days or more or 120 days or more but less than 182 days and 365 days in past 4 years 120 days or more but less than 182 days and 365 days in past 4 year this is the major amendment from finance act 2020 then he shall be treated as resident and not ordinarily resident in exam 
you have to consider carefully number of days in India. If it is for less than 120 days, blindly answer non-resident. If he is in India for 120 days or more, but less than 182 days and, and, and 365 days in immediate past for a year, then his residential status shall be resident and not ordinarily resident. Resident and not ordinarily resident. Third and last, for 182 days or more, normal case. Normal case. What do you mean by normal case? You have to check additional condition also. You have to check additional condition also. Check additional condition also. I am again repeating, an Indian citizen or person of Indian origin who lives abroad comes to India to visit, comes to India to visit India having total income exceeds 15 lakh, less than 120 days, blind answer non-resident for 120 days or more but less than 180 days, 182 days and 365 days in past for a year. From Finance Act 2020, he shall be treated as resident and not ordinarily resident. And if his period of stay in India is 182 days or more, then it shall be treated as normal case. Normal case means you have to check additional conditions also. Fine? Yes, sir. Any ifs and buts? No, Any ifs and buts? So, crux of the matter is, crux of the matter is, just write it down, write it down, crux. When an individual, is said to be, resident and, not ordinarily resident when an individual is said to be resident and not ordinarily resident when number one an Indian citizen resides abroad in X heaven country where total income exceed Bolo beta. 15 lakhs. 15 oh, yeah. lakhs. Very good. Where total income exceeds 15 lakh. Underline the word Indian citizen. Here person of Indian origin is not covered. Underline the word resides in tax seven country. Underline the word total income exceeds 15 lakh. Then his status would be resident and not ordinarily resident. Kis sal se aaya betaye? Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Second, second, an Indian citizen, aap bhi bolo mere saath saath, or, Indian citizen, or, person of Indian origin.
हेलो हेलो सर वी कैन नॉट हियर यू हेलो Am I audible to all? Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, yes, sir. You sorry. are audible. Extremely sorry, beta. So finally, crux of the matter: individual is said to be resident and not ordinarily resident in the following three situation. Individual is said to be resident and not ordinarily resident in the following three situation. Number one. an indian citizen resides abroad in tax haven country where total income exceeds 15 lakh number 2 an indian citizen or person of indian origin resides abroad in any country and comes to india for visit purpose and his total income of such person exceeds 15 lakh and he should be in india for 120 days or more but less than 180 days in current year and and 365 days or more in past four year and number third any other individual not covered in not covered in first and second above who satisfies any one of the basic condition and satisfies both of the additional condition so in these three cases individual shall be treated as resident and not ordinarily resident out of which first and second is amended by finance act 2020 this is the whole crux of resident and not ordinarily resident in the following three situation individual should to be resident and not ordinarily resident bolo beta mere sath sath number 1 indian citizen resides abroad in tax haven country where total income exceeds 15 leg number 2 indian citizen or person of indian origin resides abroad in any country comes to india for visit purpose total income exceeds 15 lakh then he should be in india for 120 days or more but less than 182 days in current year and 365 days or more in past four year number 3 any other individual not covered in 1 and 2 if he satisfies any one of the basic condition and satisfies both of the additional condition This is the whole crux of residential status in totality regarding amendment. 
any ifs and buts from your side regarding amendments only am i audible yes sir, yes, sir. any query uh, no sir shall i move on then income under the head salary amendment in income under the head salary section 15 to 17 i am taking amendment phase only na so first amendment is residential status second income under the head salary first amendment by finance act 2020 first amendment by finance act 2020 employer contribution employer contribution towards employer contribution towards number 1 recognize provident fund recognize provident fund number 2 super innovation fund number 3 national pension scheme employer contribution towards recognized provident fund superannuation fund national pension scheme total contribution total contribution up to 750000 Above seven lakh fifty thousand, up to seven lakh fifty thousand, tax free. Above seven lakh fifty thousand, in excess of साढ़े सात लाख. In excess of seven point five lakh, shall be taxable. In the hands of employee. under the head salary so i am repeating again employer contribution towards number 1 recognize provident fund towards super innovation fund towards national pension scheme you have to check whole contribution if whole contribution is up to 7.5 lakh if entire contribution towards these three scheme super innovation national pension and recognized provident fund up to 7.5 lakh tax free nothing shall be taxable if it exceed 7.5 lakh then in excess of 7.5 lakh excess amount shall be taxable in the hands of employee under the head salary suppose contribution amount is 9 lakh how much would be taxable if contribution amount is 9 lakh how much would be taxable 1.5 lakhs 1.5 lakh if contribution amount is 12 lakh how much would be taxable 4.5 lakh if contribution is 12 lakh then taxable 4.5 lakh if contribution is 7 lakh if contribution no. is 7 lakh exempted exempted fully exempted so this one is amended from finance act 2020 prior to finance act 2020 there is no upper cap of 7.5 lakh there is no upper cap of 7.5 lakh upper cap of 7.5 is introduced by finance act 2020 upper cap is applicable for three type of funds recognized provident fund super innovation fund national pension scheme popularly known as nps contribution up to 7.5 lakh tax free above 7.5 lakh in excess of 7.5 it shall be taxable
and ifs and buts in salary and ifs and buts say yes or no uh, no sir shall i move on yes next second amendment in salary important amendment second amendment in income under the head salary isop have you heard this name have you heard this name uh, sure sir employee stock option plan prior to finance act 2020 prior to finance act 2020 is so allotted by employer to employee treated as perquisite taxable in the hands of employee taxable in the hands of employee in the year in which shares are allotted If shares are allotted in financial year let us say 2021 then taxability shall arise in 2021 if shares are allotted in 1920 then taxability shall be arise in previous year 1920 itself perquisite shall be taxable in the financial year in which shares are actually allotted this was the position prior to finance act 2020 is so treated as perquisite taxable in the hands of employee under the head salary and taxable in the year in which shares are actually allotted amended by finance act 2020 deferment of tax deferment of tax liability applicable to employees of eligible startups deferment of tax liability applicable to employees of eligible startups what is the amendment by finance act 2020 if you are the employee of eligible startup then isop shall be taxable at the earlier of following isop shall be taxable at the earlier of following Number one, expiry of four year from the end of year. Expiry of four year from the end of year in which is of was allotted. number 2 sale of iso by employee sale of iso by employee number 3 resignation by employee
these three days and whichever is earlier, earlier, earlier. Number one, expiry of four year from the end of year in which ISOP was allotted. Number two, sale of employer ISOP by employee. Number third, resignation by employee. These three date, whichever is earlier, taxability shall arise in that year. Prior to Finance Act 2020, taxability shall arise in the year of allotment. But after Finance Act 2020, taxability shall arise earlier of these three days. Taxability shall arise as and when earlier of three days happen. These three days happen. Number one, expiry of four year from the end of year in which ISOP was allotted. Number two, sale of ISOP by employee. Number third, resignation by employee, whichever is earlier. So, crux of the matter. Crux of the matter. When taxability, yeah, when ISOP shall be taxable, when ISOP shall be taxable in the hands of employee. When ISOP shall be taxable in the hands of employee. Employee ke hand mein ye kab kab taxable hoga. What is the answer? Employee of eligible startup any other employee. Please let me know the answer. Please tell me the answer. Any other employee? Taxable in the year in which? Allotted. Very good. Very good. An employee of eligible startup? Taxable? Taxable number one. Four year from the end of first four year. Financial year. From the end of year. In which is so far allotted or sale of ISO or Resignation of employee, whichever is earlier. Earlier, very good. As a participate, Karagaro. This is the whole crux of income under the head salary as far as amendment portion is concerned. So we have done with residential status, we have done with income under the head salary. Any ifs and buts, any query. Make it fast. <laughs> Is so clear, sir. Shall I move on? Yes, sir. Now, income under the head house property, no amendment by Finance Act 2020. Income under the head house property, no amendment by Finance Act 2020. Next, next head, income under the head, PGBP, income under the head, PGBP, first amendment, section 32AD is not applicable now. Have you read this section, Mata? Investment in new plant and machinery deduction at the rate of 15%. You know this section or not? No, sir. Kindly explain. 
earlier there was a section section 32 ad if a manufacturing concern made investment in new plant and machinery then he is eligible a deduction at a rate of 15% on original cost of new plant and machinery if a manufacturing concern made investment in new plant and machinery then he shall allowed a deduction of 15% under section 32 ad now the section has been abolished by finance act 2020 accordingly no such deduction shall be allowed no such deduction shall be allowed i hope you are getting the issue okay thank you sir second section 35 any idea any idea scientific research social research statistical research have you heard this name or not donation for scientific research social research statistical research not an issue prior to finance act 2020 isko aise lo donation for scientific research donation for social research donation for statistical research prior to finance act 20 after finance act 20 Prior to Finance Act twenty one fifty percent regarding scientific, hundred regarding social, hundred regarding statistical. So SSC may donation to scientific research association example ISRO, then he would be entitled to get a deduction of one fifty percent. If he made a donation of rupee one lakh, then he will get deduction of rupee one lakh fifty thousand. If he made donation to social research hundred percent, statistical research again hundred. percent from finance act 2020 this 150 percent reduced to 100 percent 100 remain same and this remains same this one is amended by finance act 2020 please let me know the amendment what is amendment by finance act 2020 earlier donation for scientific research was eligible for 150% deduction now eligible for 100% deduction only clear clear yes sir yes next fine number so why Third. reduced sorry so why reduce scientific research 150 to 100 law says when we are reducing the tax rates when i will let you know the tax rates sir tax rate is reducingly early constantly basis beta earlier tax rate on company was 30% now reduced to 25% yeah. then reduced to 15% okay. or 18% as the case uh, may be okay law says okay. when we are reducing the tax rate then why we would provide you the extra deduction yeah good got it Shall I move on? Shall I move on? Yes, sir. Third, yes. in house research. In house research. Prior to Finance Act two thousand twenty. any expense incurred by company k 
carrying on in house research is entitled for a deduction of 150%. Any expense incurred by company carrying on in house research entitled for a deduction of 150%. Suppose expenses incurred are 1 lakh. Deduction rupee 1 lakh 50,000. Again, this 150 has been abolished. Or Finance Act 2020 made its 100%. 100% कब से हुआ बेटा ये? Finance Act 2020. Since the Finance Act. So number one amendment 32 AD has been abolished. Second amendment donation for scientific research earlier 150% now 100%. Third amendment in house research carried on by company earlier 150% deduction now only 100% deduction shall be allowed fourth and most important amendment highly expected for exam tax audit section 44 ab sir what was the amendment in tax third? third amendment this one is the third amendment na? in house research Shall I repeat it again? Sir, yes, amendment kya hua, sir? Yes. Amendment beta pehle 150 tha na? Ab gata ke 100 kar diya na? Earlier 150, now 100% only. Clear? Say yes or no beta? Yes sir. Clear sir. Okay sir. A B tax audit. Tax audit. Okay. Assess the carrying on business. Yes, sir. Thank you. Assess the carrying on profession. SSE carrying on business, SSE carrying on profession, SSE carrying on business, anyone, when is required to get his account audit, when, turnover exceeds, sir, 5 crores, uh... 1 crore, 1 crore, prior to, old law, prior to finance act 2020, when turnover exceeds 1 crore and in case of profession? When turnover exceeds? 50 lakhs. 50 lakh. Prior to Finance Act 2020, assessee is under an obligation to get his accounts audited. We have to check whether assessee carrying on business or profession in case of profession if turnover exceeds rupee 1 crore then SSC is under an obligation to get his accounts audited and number 2 if SSC carrying on profession then turnover must exceed rupee 50 lakh only then SSC is under an obligation to get his account audited from finance act 2020 no change in profession exact same no change in case of a profession absolutely no change prior to finance act 2020 50 lakh consider after finance act 2020 still 50 lakh shall be taken into consideration up to 50 lakh no audit after 50 lakh audit is a compulsory in case of business this limit has been increased to how much? Five 
फाइव करोड़ फाइव करोड़ द बिजनेस लिमिट ऑफ वन करोड़ हैज बीन इंक्रीज टू फाइव करोड़ सब्जेक्ट टू एग्रीगेट ऑफ पेमेंट मेड और एग्रीगेट ऑफ पेमेंट रिसीव लिमिट ऑफ वन करोड़ हैज बीन इंक्रीज टू फाइव करोड़ सब्जेक्ट टू एग्रीगेट ऑफ पेमेंट में ड्यूरिंग द ईयर एन एग्रीगेट ऑफ पेमेंट रिसीव ड्यूरिंग द ईयर इन कैश डज नॉट एक्सीड फाइव परसेंट ऑफ टोटल बेसिक प्रिंसिपल लिमिट ऑफ वन करोड़ इज एप्लीकेबल हावेवर हावेवर इन सम स्पेशल केसेस लिमिट ऑफ वन करोड़ हैज बीन एक्सटेंडेड टू अप टू फाइव करोड़ व्हाट वाज द कंडीशन बेटा एग्रीगेट ऑफ पेमेंट मेड ड्यूरिंग द ईयर इन कैश डज नॉट एक्सीड फाइव परसेंट ऑफ टोटल एंड एग्रीगेट ऑफ पेमेंट रिसीव ड्यूरिंग द ईयर इन कैश डज नॉट एक्सीड फाइव परसेंट ऑफ टोटल इफ बोथ फाइंड आर सेटिस्फाइड देन अप टू फाइव करोड़ no need to get your accounts audited if any one of condition is not satisfied then 1 crore limit is applicable then 1 crore limit is applicable let us understand with the help of an example suppose टोटल पेमेंट मेड बाय एस एस सी ड्यूरिंग द ईयर रूपी थ्री करोड़ आउट ऑफ विच टेन लैख is paid by cash determine turnover for tax audit purpose 1 crore or 5 crore anyone anyone कैश पेमेंट टेन लैख आउट ऑफ थ्री करोड़ हाउ मच इज द परसेंटेज हाउ मच इज द परसेंटेज आई थिंक थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री परसेंट हाउ मच इज द परसेंटेज आई थिंक थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री Calculate, calculate the percentage. Yes, sir. Three point three three. So as cash payment does not exceed five percent of total payment. So therefore, how much turnover shall be considered? One crore or five crore? Sir, one crore. फाइव करोड़ फाइव करोड़ फाइव करोड़ ये तो अमेंडमेंट है फाइनेंस एक्ट 20 से कैश पेमेंट पांच परसेंट तक है कैश पेमेंट इज अप टू फाइव परसेंट फाइव परसेंट और लेस तो लिमिट एक की जगह कितनी हो जाएगी एक करोड़ की जगह पांच करोड़ तो देर फॉर टर्न ओवर ऑफ फाइव करोड़ शेल बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन टर्न ओवर ऑफ फाइव करोड़ शेल बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन
clear? Shall I repeat it again? Yes. Take another example. Example two. Total payment receive. During the year, four crore. Out of which, cash receive is forty lakh. Determine turnover for tax audit purpose. TU means turnover. Determine turnover for tax or data purpose. Cash forty lakh out of four crore ten percent ten percent say yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. This one is more than five percent. More than five percent. Yes, sir. How much? How much turnover? One crore. Very good. One crore shall be taken into consideration. Please focus in this point. No change in case of profession. No change in case of profession. Right to Finance Act 2050 lakh after Finance Act 2050 lakh change only in case of business. In case of business, basic principle turnover one crore. However, if cash receipt or cash payment of total payment or receipt up to five percent, then limit has been increased from one crore to five crore in totality. Up to five crore, no need to get your account audit. After five crore, audit is compulsory. Any issue? So this is the whole crux of PGBP amendment. Number one, 32 AD deduction is not available. Number two, donation for scientific research institution reduced from 150% to 100%. Number third, in-house research made by company reduced from 150% to 100%. Number fourth, tax audit in case of business. Turnover has been increased from one crore to five crore, subject to the satisfaction of one condition. And condition is, condition is total cash received or total cash payment does not exceed five percent of total share. This is the whole crux of PGBP in totality. Now, what should I do? Should I take your queries? To take the amendment first. Amendments, sir. Amendments. Now, income under the head capital gain. Income under the head capital gain. First amendment. If capital asset were acquired prior to 1st April 2001, then what was the position? If capital asset was acquired prior to 1st April 2001, then, then what was the law? Anyone? Anyone? Then, Assessi has the option to index 
either actual cost or or any idea fair market value as on 1st april 2001 if capital asset was acquired prior to 1st april 2001 then sec has the option to index either actual cost or fair market value as on 1st april 2001 this was the position prior to finance act 2020 finance act 2020 <laughs> has brought an amendment <coughs> sorry what is the amendment such fmv cannot exceed such fmv cannot exceeds the stamp value has on 1st april 2001 such fmi cannot exceed the stamp value as on 1st april 2001 these line is introduced by finance act 2020 example on 1st november 95 mr x purchase a house property for a sum of rupee 5 lakh FMV of property as on 1st April 2001 rupee 15 lakh while stamp value of property as on 1st April 2001 rupee Twelve lakh. Mr. X sold the property on sixteen October two thousand twenty for rupee fifty lakh. Compute capital gain. i am repeating again on 1st november 95 mr x purchase a house property for a sum of rupee 5 lakh fmv of property as on 1st april 2001 rupee 15 lakh while stamp value of property as on 1st april 2001 rupee 12 lakh mr x sold the property on 16 october 2020 for rupee 50 lakh compute capital gain you know how to compute capital gain capital gain compute karna aata hai beta yes or no first of all you have to write down period of holding period of holding of asset 1st november 95 10th October 2020 16th October 2020 What is the nature of capital gain short term or long term Long term long term as period of holding is more than 24 month 
लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन हाउ मच इज द सेल्स कंसिडरेशन फिफ्टी लैख लेस 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 इंडेक्स कॉस्ट ऑफ एक्विजिशन है ना हाउ मच हाउ मच इज द ओरिजिनल कॉस्ट फाइव लैख हाउ मच इज द फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू फिफ्टीन लैख फिफ्टीन हाउ मच इज द स्टैम्प वैल्यू ट्वेल्व प्रायर टू फाइनेंस एक्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी दिस वैल्यू शेल बी इंडेक्सड प्रायर टू फाइनेंस एक्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एफ एम वी शेल बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन आफ्टर फाइनेंस एक्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी FMV cannot exceeds the stamp value. FMV cannot exceeds the stamp value. If it exceeds, then stamp value shall be taken into consideration. FMV cannot exceeds the stamp value. If exceeds, then stamp value shall be taken into consideration. How much index will be, son? Twelve lakh into indexation number of current year three zero one. You know the indexation number? Denominator. Yes. Denominator hundred. So how much is the index cost of acquisition? How much is the index cost of acquisition? Thirty six twelve. Thirty six. Twelve. Twelve. So this one is long term capital gain. Thirteen eighty eight. This one is amended by Finance Act twenty. I hope you are getting the issue. I hope you are getting the issue. Yes, sir. What would be your answer if stamp value is twenty lakh? What would be your answer if stamp value is twenty lakh? Fifteen lakh. Good, good, good. Then fifteen lakh shall be taken into consideration. Law says stamp value cannot exceeds by fair market value. Stamp value cannot exceeds the fair market value. So, if stamp value is twenty lakh instead of ten lakh, then fifteen lakh shall be taken into consideration. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. This is the first amendment of capital gain. Second amendment, section fifty C. Prior to Finance Act 2020, what was Section 50C? Deemed sale price. Prior to Finance Act 2020. We have to compare two things: sale price of property. Stamp value of property. as on the date of sale prior to finance act 
if stamp value of property is up to 110% of sale price then then actual sale price shall be chargeable to capital gain if stamp value of property is up to 110% of sale price then actual sale price shall be chargeable to capital gain if stamp value of property is more than 110% of sale price then then stamp value shall be chargeable to capital gain stamp value up to double one zero percent then sale price chargeable to capital gain above double one zero percent then stamp value shall be chargeable to capital gain this was the position prior to finance act 2020 more than then stamp value Changes by Finance Act 2020. This double one zero percent has been reduced by five percent. Now we have to compare one zero five percent of sale price. We have to compare one zero five percent of sale price earlier. Earlier, hundred and ten percent. Now from Finance Act 2020 and onward, 105%, 105% shall be taken into consideration. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a change in capital gain in yes, totality. Sir. This is the whole change of PGBP capital gain house property no change and salary now your query one by one from the chapter residential status any query salary house property and pgbp or capital gain any query from your side one by one make it fast uh, sir uh, i uh, i have an query uh, regarding the sir uh, house property sir uh, how much rent should be shown as a house property or uh, and how much rent should be shown in the income from other sources how much uh? rent rent sir, rent rent Re receive. Uh, yes sir rent uh -huh. sir uh, sometimes we show uh, rent in the uh, income from other sources if I there is rent from building if there is rent from building then such rental income shall always taxable under the head house property if there is rent but not from building if there is rent but not from building say from plant and machinery say from land then such rental income shall be taxable under the head other sources okay, sir, sir uh, once more sir uh, uh, is there any amendment uh, regarding presumptive in income means uh, Regarding which income? Presumptive income. Presumptive income means. Uh, Presumptive income. Presumptive income. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Presumptive income. Section 44AB. AD, yes, AE. Uh, 44AD and 44A. Both. Both. No change. No change. Okay. No change from Finance Act 2020. Exact 8% turnover. Or in case of digital payment, 6%. Yes, sir. 
sir sir uh, one thing uh, one question i have last question sir uh, is there any uh, amendment regarding sir uh, uh, 95% of uh, digital transactions means agree, uh, aggregate of transactions there should be 90% uh, 95% of uh, digital transactions then in we case, can uh, in case of uh, audit digital transaction should be digital transaction should be 95% or more you are saying digital transaction i am saying cash payment no sir uh, digital transactions wait 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 aggregate of transactions wait listen me carefully okay sir okay okay cash does not exceed 5% what does it mean digital payment must be digital payment must be 95% Okay, thank you. Got my point or not? Yes. You are talking about digital payment. I am talking about other than digital payment. Okay. बात तो वही है ना? हाँ सर. बात ही. बात ही. बात तो वही है. बात तो वही है. हाँ. Any other query from salary, house property, PGBP, capital gain, residential status? Any other query? Or any other point? From any side, beta. What should I do, beta? Shall I conclude the class or not? Yeah. So uh, you will be giving any notes, so any capturing on these amendments uh, for salary for this tax and GST. Beta, you have to visit my YouTube channel for more updates. any type of note will not be provided in class uh, no but is it in a one uh, uh, is it in a one attempt or we will have to go through many you needs notes of amendment you mm -hmm. need not of notes of amendment beta yeah yeah means the capsuling is in one youtube or it is uh, uh, scattered separate lectures separate scattered Okay, write up will not be possible. No possible, no possibility. Okay, no worry. Thank you, thank you. Okay. The, the YouTube then. Thank you. No worry. Okay. Okay. Anna. Hmm. Bolle mita. Say again. Uh, sir, name of YouTube channel. Abhishek, your voice is not clear. Dobara, bolo. Sir, bolo, bata. The name of your YouTube. Bata, आवाज नहीं आ रही आपकी या तो आप अपनी query chat box में लिखो मैं वहाँ से देखूँ. मेरे को आवाज नहीं आ रही बेटा आपकी एनी अदर क्वेरी अभिषेक अफरीन एंड वेल्स इज देयर भागीरथ अंजलि सी ए लखन हरिप्रशांत एनी क्वेरी नायक रमेश रौनक रावत सर नोट्स सृष्टि टू एनी एवरी वन नोट्स विल ट्राई टू प्रोवाइड यू द नोट्स बट ऑल्सो विल ट्राई नॉट कमिटमेंट लिंक टू द यूट्यूब चैनल सर्च बाय माई नेम दीपक जैन क्लासेस search with my name deepak jain classes you on youtube hmm can you repeat sir your youtube class can you repeat the youtube class deepak 
जैन क्लासेस fine sir in that this uh, topic will also be there today what you taught multiple topics multiple topics gst custom direct taxation keep in touch with this channel beta you will gets all the major amendment through this channel also any further query any further query no sir shall i conclude the class samarth sajita और कौन कौन है बेटा सृष्टि तुषार सो फाइनली नो क्वेरी सर यू गेट यूर सेल्फ एडिट इन व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप वी हैव नो 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 सृष्टि You have any WhatsApp group? A WhatsApp group is created by ICSI or by students only? So by students only. How many students are there? So around thirty. Add me in WhatsApp group, beta. My number is nine eight one eight five. fine yes sir uh, is there any change uh, uh, brought uh, uh, by finance act uh, relating the flat rates of sir capital gain means a long no. term capital gain no okay sir okay same okay. 20 or 10 as the case may be just add me in whatsapp group i will provide you all the notes regarding amendments on all major chapters uh, can anyone can anyone put the whatsapp number in the chat box so that i can also be this one is my whatsapp number beta on screen is it not, not visible sir sir not sir uh, this groups number this children has told na i really i don't know beta सृष्टि आ रही थी हाँ सृष्टि जो बोली उनको बोलिएगा यहाँ पर जस्ट नंबर दीजिए एडमिन Shall I conclude the class? I have other session also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. ठीक है. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.